this guy reveals that he was hired by the person who sent Rolo to make his delivery. Noor apologizes for ruining their plan, but the guy doesn't care, and he just reveals that he is after the kid. Rolo is worth a lot of money, so the guy is there to take him back. This guy moves at blazing speed, and Noor just barely manages to repel his attack. The stranger explains that his client wants to end the kid's life, but it would be much easier for him if he eliminated Rolo right now, so he would only have to bring back his body. As they fight Noor says that he doesn't understand what this guy's problem is. But the guy says that Noor doesn't need to understand anything. Lin is shocked to see how fast they are moving, because she can't even follow along, and Ines tells her to stay behind her. The stranger continues with his dangerous attacking style, but Noor manages to parry him every time. The guy doesn't lose his cool at all, and simply decides to chop Noor's head off. Noor parries the guy's attack at the very last moment, and Noor is shocked that the mystery guy was able to generate such power with just a tiny blade. The stranger is surprised as well when his blade falls apart, but he has another one that he uses to attack Noor. Noor realizes that he is in trouble, because all he can do is avoid the attack, on intuition alone. Noor won't be able to last much longer, because fighting while trying to protect Rolo is taking its toll. Lin is horrified by the power surging from their battle, and she can't even move. Ines uses her shield to protect Lin, and Ines reveals that she has just realized something. This man's appearance, along with his immense strength, has made it clear that he is the former s rank adventurer, called Zadu. A look back in S found documents from unsolved cases. This case was closed because the target was officially eliminated on record, but it wasn't true. The target was Zadu who became an s rank adventurer at a young age, which made him a target for other s ranks Ines was shocked to hear this, because s rank targets are not usually humans. Gilbert was excited to take down Zadu, but the heroes told him to not even try. The reason they pretended that Zadu was eliminated, was because he is actually too strong for anyone to take out. They decided to close the case, because they didn't want to send any more people just to get eliminated. Gilbert was still curious, so they explained that as a kid, Zadu mastered the ancient art of dwarven alchemy. At the young age of 13, Zadu earned the name Dragon Slayer. Gilbert was shocked, because that meant this guy was even more impressive than him. Zadu became very famous, and he was admired by all adventurers. However, Zadu did not always use his talents for good things. Zadu eliminated several civilians for an unknown reason, but the guild didn't want to take away his adventurer license, because he made many contributions to them. Zadu even took down a disaster-level threat monster on his own. The decision on how to deal with him was split, so they decided to postpone it. Zadu takes on any job as long as it pays well, and things like morals are meaningless to him. This was made clear when Zadu wiped out an entire country and eliminated an entire royal family. It was as if Zadu had no sense of good or evil. Back to the present Ines explains all this to Lin. Zadu has been challenged by many adventurers, but it only resulted in a mountain of corpses, and the bounty on Zadu's head is now incredibly high. To prevent anyone from going after him, the guild announced that he was no longer alive. Zadu and Noor take a break from their fight, because Zadu is disappointed to see that his entire collection of daggers has been destroyed. They are made of materials that aren't supposed to break so easily, so Noor wonders if Zadu is looking for reimbursement. Zadu thinks Noor is pretty weird, but not as weird as his sword. Zadu decides to play it safe, as he tosses his sword into the sky, and Ines is shocked to see that it breaks apart into several swords. This attack is pretty famous, as it can take several hundred lives in the blink of an eye. It is a weapon that Zadu transmuted himself, and it is called the Silver Cross. Zadu uses it to attack, and Noor is barely able to protect Rolo in time. Noor knows that he won't be able to win, and Ines realizes just how terrible the situation is. Ines determines that Noor and Rolo will both perish if she doesn't help, but she reminds herself that her mission is to make sure that Lin survives. Ines realizes something, and asks Lin for permission to leave her, and assist in the battle. Noor does his best to fight back all the swords, but one of the swords is too fast for him. Luckily for Noor Ines arrives just in the nick of time. Ines reiterates that her job is to protect Lin, but Ines also realizes that this means she must keep Noor alive too. Ines uses her powerful shields to push Zada back, but it is clear that none of them is able to hit him. This is because Zadu and his swords are just moving way too fast. Ines realizes this as well, so she decides that she will focus on defense, while Noor finishes off Zadu. 
nor isn't sure if he can do it, because Zadu's swarm of swords moves around like a living creature. Just then Nor comes up with an idea, and asks Ines to move one of her shields on his signal. Then Nor physic enhances himself, as he has Ines move a shield, and Nor launches the fangs of the dragon he defeated right at Zadu. The fangs are incredibly strong, and Ines is shocked to see that Nor was able to destroy Zadu's swords with them. Nor continues using his stone throw attack, and he manages to take out most of the swords. Zada comes out of nowhere to attack Ines, but Nor manages to stop him. Zada can't understand how Nor was able to stop his attack, but what's even more strange is that his dagger made of adamantite was broken by Nor. Zada tries to attack again, but he just gets the same result. Zada thinks Nor is a pretty weird guy, so Zada asks Nor how he can see his attacks and counter them. Nor says that it is just something he can do, but Zada can tell that there's more to it. Zada decides to just call it a day and leave, because recovering his weapons after they have been shattered is a real pain. That isn't all though, as Zadu explains that there will be a huge celebration happening at the royal capital. This doesn't sound good at all to Ines, but unfortunately Zadu doesn't have any more details about this extravagant event. Zadu says that Nor is the strangest guy he has ever met, and Zadu tells Rolo to consider himself really lucky. Zadu goes for one last sneak attack, but Nor stops him once again, and Zada points out that Nor is why he wasn't able to get his reward for retrieving Rolo. Zada leaves, and everyone wonders what will happen in the capital. Nor thinks they should go back, especially since they won't be able to take Rolo to Mitra. Just then Rolo begins to shake uncontrollably, after hearing that they're all from the royal capital. Rolo tells everyone that they can't go back, because of something terrifying. Rolo heard that the biggest monster was going to the royal capital, and it was strong enough to wipe out the entire city. Lin realizes that this situation is more urgent than she thought, so Lin decides that they will return to the capital. Nor agrees with Lin's decision, but Ines refuses. Ines is shocked when Lin reveals that she knows exactly what Rain ordered Ines to do. Lin says that they will suffer the same fate as the demon folk if they abandon the capital, so they must return and warn everyone about the monster. Ines gives in, and agrees to go back, but Ines tells Len not to leave her side for even a moment. Nor thinks it would be best for Rolo if they split up, but Rolo refuses. Rolo is sure that a demon folk is the one bringing the monster, and even if he doesn't think he will be able to do anything, Rolo still wants to help. Lin sees how serious Nor has gotten, so she assumes it is because of his big heart. Lin is completely wrong, as Nor is just thinking about how he wishes if he could have taken a bite out of the poisonous frog. On their way back, Lin thinks about how worried she is, but Lin finds comfort in knowing that Nor is with her. Nor fought the dragon and the legendary Zadu, so they should be fine. Lin determines that it is her responsibility to take Nor to the royal capital, so he can save everyone, and Lin calls him the man who practically jumps straight out of an epic hero's tale. Back at the royal capital, Rain is told that many citizens have been evacuated, thanks to the efforts of the six heroes. They fended off the enemy's ambush but Rain is sure that another wave will be coming. This is the perfect time for them to do it, because the capital forces are scattered. Rain is sure that the enemy is just waiting for them to exhaust themselves and preparing the next wave. Rain wonders which direction they will be coming from, and he realizes that they could come from the sky as well. Rain is told that there have been no sightings of flying monster, but Rain notices something strange in the sky. Rain is horrified when he realizes it is hiding above the clouds, so Rain uses his uncovered ability to break its barrier. Rain stares in shock, as he can't believe what he sees. A soldier wonders if it is a black dragon, but Rain points out it is far too big. This is actually their worst nightmare, because it's a dragon of calamity. In the past Nor was taught by his father, about how dangerous dragons are. A certain adventurer would slay these dragons and the materials that came from them were turned into very high quality weapons and medicines. This in turn brought wealth to the land, and it made the adventurer a hero, which the people would call the Dragon Slayer. Nor wanted to be a Dragon Slayer, but his father explained how difficult it is to slay a dragon. Some dragons are incredibly strong, and they have been alive for thousands of years. They can make the ground crumble with just one step, and they can even destroy entire mountains, just by swinging their tail. In fact a nation was nearly destroyed by dragons that ran wild. Nor's father finished telling him these stories, but Nor never stopped wanting to become a dragon slayer. Back to the present Nor and his group traveled back to the capital, but Lin is horrified to see the dragon of calamity. 
the gigantic dragon terrifies everyone in the capital, and Rain wonders if the magic empire understands the horror they have unleashed on the world. The dragon of calamity has been asleep for the past 150 years, but it should still be dormant. Rain becomes furious because this means that the empire awakened the dragon. The dragon causes massive destruction with a single flap of its wings, so Rain orders for everyone to be evacuated. It's a terrible emergency, so Rain instructs his troops to pry anyone away from their belongings if they are hesitant to leave. One of the heroes watches from nearby, and she senses that magic is being used to obstruct all the evacuation routes. This is terrible, because it makes it impossible for the six heroes to unite. Then we see that the heroes have their hands full throughout the area. Gilbert tells the king to evacuate, but the king just instructs him to get the citizens as far away from the capital as possible. As for himself, the king has a job he still needs to do. Nearby Ines determines that there is no hope left for the capital, because the dragon will surely decimate it. Lin fears that her father will use himself as a shield, so the citizens can escape, but Lin knows that even he is no match for the legendary dragon. Lin is terrified of what will happen, so Lin hopes that her father will just leave the capital, instead of fighting. Just then everyone is shocked to see how casual Noor still is. Noor says that he has never seen a dragon before, but Lin points out that the monster he defeated earlier was also a dragon. Lin explains that her father and brother are still in the capital, but it's too late to help them. Nor casually says that he thinks he can make it in time if he runs, but this just shocks Lin. Nor says that they can use her wind blast again like they did against the goblin, but Lin fears that the power needed to get him to the capital in time will end up hurting him really bad. Nor reminds Lin that his sword will take the burden of the damage. Nor says that he owes a lot to the people of the city and to the king, so he wants to help all. Nor has to do is help the king to escape, and Nor is sure that he can do that. Lin snaps out of her pessimism, and she realizes that Nor is not someone that should be doubted. Lin's wind blasts are not meant to be used on humans, but Nor is not a normal guy. Another look back the king refusing to hand over the dungeon of the lost to the magic empire. King was told that he was just letting it go to waste, because it had the power to create an army that could control the world. The king explained that he is just choosing not to use a power that is beyond their control. Back to the present the dragon continues its rampage, and the king determines that the empire will stop at nothing to get the dungeon. King realizes that he underestimated the empire, because he never thought they would throw the full force of their might at them. Now the king takes full responsibility for the breakdown in negotiations. The capital is facing destruction, but all the king can think about is Len's safety. This makes the king realize that the empire was right. He is not fit to be king, and he has always been more suited to being on the battlefield. The king apologizes to his people for failing them, and king vows to take at least one of the dragon's eyes with him. Back with Norines creates a cylinder with her shield, to amplify Len's wind blast, and Nor stands in front of it. To amplify it more, Ines uses magic to reflect on her shield several times. This is clearly becoming more intense, and Nor can tell that this is kind of different from the last time. Lin confirms this as she explains that the impact from this wind blast is going to be far stronger than it was before. Lin puts everything she has into it, and she apologizes to Nor in advance. Lin remembers not to doubt him, and unleashes the attack. Rolo is stunned by the amount of power being admitted, and the next thing he sees is that Nor has completely disappeared in the blink of an eye. Back in the capital the king comes face to face with the dragon. Everyone watching is horrified, as the dragon prepares to use its dragon breath attack, because it is the one that burned the entire continent to a crisp several hundred years ago. The king realizes that the dragon is giving him no chance to survive, but he is determined to do something kingly at least once before he dies. The king pulls out a dagger and tells the dragon that he is going to show it how tenacious humans are. One of the heroes watching recognizes the dagger. It is the blasting dagger, and it channels all of the wielder mana, into one powerful but sacrificial blow. The heroes are horrified to see that the king is going to sacrifice himself, but they realize that there is no other option. The king goes in to sacrifice himself, but nor out of nowhere to parry the dragon's attack. Everyone watches in absolute shock, as nor just shoves the legendary dragon and the dragon collapses. The dragon wonders what is going on, and he is confused to see that a tiny human just knocked her off balance. Dragon declares that the strong control the weak with violence, 
and that is just the law of the world. Dragon Giant Tail does massive damage to the capo as it moves to strike Noor, but Noor just parries that as well. The dragon comes crashing down again, and Noor just thinks about how he thought he wouldn't survive. Then we see moments from a few minutes ago before, when Noor was launched towards the capital. Noor used physical enhancement to regain his balance, and he sent himself over the castle wall. Noor was surprised to see how fast he got there, but Noor realized that there was no way for him to stop himself. Noor didn't hesitate, and just used his parry ability. Noor never wants to do that again, and he thinks about how parrying the dragon was way easier than he expected. The dragon gets back up, but Noor doesn't think it is that scary anymore. The girls finally arrive at the capital, and they plan to help the king escape while Noor fights the dragon. Unfortunately, they end up getting attacked, but Ines manages to protect them in time. Several goblin emperors appear, but they are quite small compared to the one Noor and Lin confronted. Goblin emperors are still in a league of their own, so they are in big danger. Lin decides to think like Noor does, so Lin tells Ines not to worry, because they are only fighting goblins. Ines is inspired by her confidence, and agrees that these goblins are not nearly as terrifying as the dragon. These goblins end up blasting through her attack, but Rolo steps in and commands the goblins to stop moving. Lin uses the opportunity to freeze them, and Ines converts her shield into a sword. Ines destroys all the goblins with one powerful strike, and Lin realizes why Ines was given the Divine Sword title. Rolo is just as impressive, because he was able to stop the overpowered goblins with just a few words. Such a young kid having this power is incredible, but Lin can tell that it takes great courage for him to use it. Back with Nor we see that the dragon is getting really frustrated. Dragon keeps attacking Nor, but he just keeps parrying her. Dragon's claws and scales should be indestructible, but Nor is somehow damaging them badly. Nor is shocked by how his sword never gets a single scratch, no matter what he swings it at. Nor wonders what the secret behind it is, but it doesn't really matter, because it is his key to victory. The dragon can't understand what is going on, but he realizes that he can stop worrying, because there is no chance that her next attack will fail. Dragon flies to the sky, and everyone watches as he gathers a ton of energy into her mouth. Then Dragon releases the powerful beam right at Nor, but Nor once again parries it. This sends the attack straight into the air, and everyone watches in amazement, as its explosion covers the sky in light. The dragon lets out a roar, and Rolo can sense that there is more to its anger. The dragon is frustrated, because Nor isn't treating it as a serious threat, even though that is what it's trying to be. Dragons are very prideful, and this is especially true for the dragon elder, who considers itself to be stronger than anything. The dragon becomes furious because this fight has made it clear that he is the weak one compared to Nor. Nor parry another one of the dragon's attacks, and the girls are shocked to see that it has decided to submit to him. The townspeople watch from afar, and their mouths nearly drop to the ground. Nor remembers what his father said about the adventurer who defeated dragons. Slaying dragons brought wealth to the people, and he became known as a dragon slayer. However, Nor sees that this dragon doesn't want to fight anymore. Nor decides not to end the dragon's life, and thinks that he isn't really a hero anyway. The rest of his group rushes to him, and Nor waves to his friends. Nor tells everyone that he is okay, and thanks Rolo for helping. Rolo has no clue what Nor is talking about, so Nor explains what he just realized. The reason the dragon must have calmed down was because Rolo ordered it to. Nor is shocked when Rolo says that he didn't do anything, and the confused Nor points out that the dragon just stopped being hostile out of nowhere. Rolo had nothing to do with it, so Nor determines that the dragon must have been intimidated by just the fact that Rolo could control it. Then everyone is stunned when Nor tells Rolo to send the dragon back to where it came from. Others point out that the dragon is still very dangerous, so it would be best to eliminate it while they have the chance. Nor understands the risks, but he doesn't want to hurt the dragon. Nor knows that he is asking for something selfish, but Lin understands and agrees to allow it. Rolo isn't sure if he can order around such a powerful dragon, so Rolo thinks he will only be able to ask it politely. Nor can tell that Rolo doesn't like showing his power, so he assures Rolo that Lin and Ines won't be scared of him. These words give Rolo some courage, so he gives it a shot. Rolo can understand the dragon, so he informs Nor that it has decided to do anything its master orders. The girls can't believe what they just heard, but the clueless Nor thinks that the dragon is calling Rolo its master. 
nor tells Rolo to have it quietly returned to its home and to make sure it never even tries to hurt humans ever again. Rolo passes the message along and the dragon shockingly agrees to do everything Nor says. The dragon takes to the sky and roars one last time before leaving. Everyone watches as the legendary dragon leaves peacefully, but Nor is horrified when a powerful attack knocks it right out of the sky. The terror is shared by everyone, and we see that the leader of the empire was behind the attack. Dorita is pleased with himself, and he says that even a dragon that has lived for thousands of years is still just a stupid dragon in the end. The dragon was just a pawn, but Dorita is disappointed that it didn't destroy the capital. Dorita decides that he will just have to start the attack anyway, so Dorita summoned his army nearby. There are a ton of troops, and the firepower of his army is unrivaled. In past we see how the Empire planned out this attack. After the dragon decimated the capital, the troops were to come in and clean up. Foot soldiers would be equipped with magic swords and magic shields, while the elite troops would have magic armor and magic cannons. They would also have massive shields and gigantic mana cannons. The king was very pleased by the plan, but a soldier named Randius had a problem with the war. Randius didn't think that it would benefit the country in the long run, but he was just silenced by Dorita. The king refused to let anyone pose a threat to them and declared that they would show everyone the power of their magic. Dorita wants this war to go down in history so everyone can know about the foolish decision the Clay's kingdom made. Dorita also wants everyone to know that it was a country of fools who neglected proper upkeep of the Dungeon of the Lost. They were led down the path of ruin by their own selfish greed. As for Dorita, he will be known as the one who liberated the country of this foolishness. Nearby Nor and the others find the dragon, but they can't tell if it's still alive without getting closer. Just then they spot the magical empire, and the empire spots them right back. They see Princess Lin, but what is most concerning is that Ines is with her. This is because Ines is one of the living legends, known all around the world, and Dorita assumes that she was the one that saved the capital. The era where legends rule has come to an end, and Dorita declares that it's time for those with wisdom to define the world. Dorita orders for the mana cannon to be fired, because even if Ines is known as the divine shield, this weapon will still evaporate her into nothing. Ines will just be another legend to be defeated by his hand, which is why Dorita loves war so much. The magic cannon prepares to fire, and they notice at the last second, so Ines tells the other to run away. The weapon is fired, and Dorita declares that it's all over for her. Ines just stares as the huge beam approaches, but Nor shockingly steps up to parry the attack. The beam goes flying everywhere, and no one can believe what they just saw. Dorita and his troops are in such disbelief that they think there is something wrong with the weapon, so Dorita has them prepare another attack. Nor is amazed to see such a huge army, so the girls explain that they are trying to annihilate the kingdom. The Clay's kingdom has an army as well, but they don't stand a chance against the Empire's army numbers. Ines wants Len to retreat with her, so Len wonders what Nor plans to do. Nor says that it should be obvious, and Nor thinks about how he needs to run for his life and get away from this place as soon as possible. Lin agrees that it was a silly question to ask, but she thinks that Nor is going to do something heroic. Nor wonders why Lin is smiling, and wonders if Lin understood what he meant. Nor tries to clarify that he is going to run away, but they are interrupted by another attack. Ines blocks it this time, so the annoyed Dorita decides to take shelter at the rear of his army. They are being pinned down by all the attacks, so Nor determines that there is only one way to escape. Nor tells the others that he is going to distract the army, so they should use that time to get away. Nor thinks that he is bad at fighting, but Nor is confident in his ability to run away. In the past, Nor sharpened his running away ability by running from swarms of bees. Nor plans to run around like crazy, and Lin decides to give him some help. Nor is shocked to see that this means Lin is going to use her wind blast on him again, but she promises to control it better this time. Nor tries to clarify that he isn't just going to throw his life away, but there is no time to talk. Another attack is coming, so Nor enhances himself, and then Lin sends him flying. Nor is glad to see that he can deflect the Empire's attacks, and he flies across the battlefield. There is no turning back now, so Nor charges right at the entire army. Nor uses the parry ability which he spent on all those years practicing and he disarms a ton of troops. Nor just wants to buy enough time for the others to get away, so he plans to run around and parry everything in front of him. Dorita is horrified to see his army being toyed with, and Nor appears before him. 
all the weapons that Nor parried went straight into the air, and they came raining down on the army. The giant shields were also parried by Nor, and Dorita can't understand what kind of attack Nor is using. Nor continues his chaotic attack, and Dorita wonders who he is. Nor once again ends up near Dorita, and Dorita realizes that Nor was the guy that was just standing next to Lin. Dorita can't understand how Nor covered so much distance, and he wonders why Nor is now ignoring everyone, just to stare at him. Dorita fears that Nor knows that he is the Emperor, and he freaks out when Nor takes hold of him. The panicky Dorita reminds himself that his armor and sword are made of orichalcum materials, so he decides to fight back. Nor flies right past him, so Dorita assumes that Nor ran away, but Dorita just ends up getting knocked around by the mana cannons. Nor keeps flying around like a maniac, and reality sets in for Dorita. Dorita's giant army is being destroyed, and so are his shields, who were supposed to be able to defend against a dragon's breath. They are all worthless now, so Dorita demands to know who Nor is. Just then Dorita recognizes Clay's black blade, which used to be behind his throne. Dorita is horrified, because it is the one dungeon relic that he wants, above all others. What is most shocking, is that this sword is made from an unknown metal, and it's supposed to be too heavy for any normal human to carry. Even the strong King Clay is needed to use two hands to wield it. There is no way this random guy could surpass Clay's, but Nor easily tosses the sword over his shoulder. Dorita is terrified of Nor, because he destroyed the entire army all alone, and now he is just keeping him alive to torture him. Dorita is so scared that he wets his pants, and takes off running. Dorita hops on his horse, and gets away from Nor as fast as possible. So now what will happen next? Subscribe to our channel to find out what will happen next. So friends, if you liked our recap video, then please like and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.